The sand from the long dead tomb floor filled my boots as we ran. Here we were again, crushing the bones of Fahir into dust, descending down the long elevator through wave after wave of horrendous spider creatures and smashing the thick-skinned body of the tomb's guardian at the end until it was nothing more than ichor and rotting meat. And even though the smell was awful, the green stain of the giant spider's blood seemed to be permanently discoloring my skin. I knew that I came here for treasure long thought lost. The famed boots, the tyrant, once belonged to a ruthless baron and possessed great magical power. In order for the magics to activate though, you needed to collect the set, traveling from godforsaken dungeon to dungeon in hopes that you might have a small chance at obtaining its complete power. As the lifeless husk of the spider guardian crashed to the floor, a green light shined like a beacon through its rotting flesh. At last, the power of feasting Baron's pack was mine for the taking. Welcome to the set item guide. This guide is up to date for pre-launch and season one of Diablo Immortal. We'll cover where to find each set item in the game and how you can obtain them. Additionally, I'm going to rate each set on a tier list based on its usefulness in different aspects of the game, including different PVE and PVP modes. Watch till the end because you'll want to target farm a set based on your playstyle and your game objectives. Once you finally reach the maximum character level and unlock Hell 1 difficulty, you begin your in-game journey. Set items are your first stop on this journey and offer you an incredible amount of character power over your old rare items for secondary gear slots. Set items can roll exceptional, just like legendary items, making them the most powerful items in your secondary slots in the entire game. You can upgrade these items past rank five at the blacksmith up to rank 10. Prepare yourself to grind dungeons again and again in search for the perfect set item because they are amazing. Set items are the highest tier item for any secondary gear slot, including your neck, both rings, hands, waist, and feet slots. Fortunately, set items never conflict with your legendary items like in other Diablo games, and instead offer an expansive set of choices for your build. Each set has a two-piece bonus, a four-piece bonus, and a six-piece bonus. This means that if you wear gear pieces that belong to the same set, you can activate extra set bonuses. You can also mix and match different sets together, such as getting a two out of six and a four out of six bonus of two different sets, allowing you to fit these items to your character's specific build and your playstyle. Furthermore, set items are found exclusively in dungeons and only drop from the final boss. This makes grinding dungeons a very important end game activity. Each week, there are two dungeons that provide a bonus to set item drop rates. These two dungeons are found in the codex by looking for up arrows on the set item icon on the dungeon's codex entry, and they reset each week on Monday during the server reset. Now, Hell 1 difficulty is when you first unlock set items, but only waist, hands, and feet slots are available in Hell 1. To unlock all of the set item slots, you need to play on Hell 2 difficulty or above. Set items are fairly rare drops, and finding a perfectly rolled one can be a challenge. Because of this, it can be more beneficial sometimes to optimize for stats rather than hunting down the specific set bonuses, so be careful with your gearing. However, if you're lucky, you can have both incredible stats and set bonuses at the same time. One quick note here is that during the beta, the final dungeon was unavailable. So some of these set item locations may be shuffled around during the game's launch. These set item locations are at the very top of my list of things to update after the game goes live. So make sure that you check out my max roll set item guide for the absolute most up-to-date and accurate locations. Link for that is in the description below. Now let's review each set in detail and show you where you can find them all. Feasting Baron's Pack, or Barons for short, is a set best used for PvP-focused builds around loss of control effects. Loss of control includes skills that stun, slow, and fear opponents. When used correctly, Barons gives you incredible amounts of cooldown reduction, enabling you to become a PvP powerhouse. The 2 out of 6 bonus increases the duration of your abilities that cause loss of control by 30%. 4 out of 6 bonus, increases damage done from all sources by 15% to enemies suffering under your loss of control effects. 6 out of 6 bonus, unleash a Nova of Ice each time you defeat an enemy afflicted by your loss of control effects, dealing 766 damage to nearby enemies and freezing them for 4 seconds. Cannot occur more often than once every 40 seconds. Now here's where to find these items. The Subjugator, this is your next slot. 
You can find this in Hell 2 Kikudis Rapids, the turn key. This is your first ring. You find this in the Temple of Nomadi on Hell 2 or higher. The Prisoner, this is your second ring. You find this in the Caverns of Echoes, Hell 2 or higher. The Mailed Fist, this is your hand slot. Find this in the Forgotten Tower on Hell 1 or higher. The Gaoler, this is your waste slot. You can find this in Destruction's End on Hell 1 or higher. The Tyrant, this is your feet slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach or the Tomb of Fahir on Hell 1 or higher. Grace of the Flagellant, or Grace for short, is one of the best PvE sets in the game. Skills that continuously damage, do channel damage, or persistent ground damage are especially good for killing bosses in PvE, making this set very effective in dungeons and challenge rifts. The 2 out of 6 bonus is all continual damage, channel damage, and persistent ground damage increased by 15%. The 4 out of 6 bonus. Each time you damage an individual enemy five times, you will do 287 additional damage to that enemy. The six out of six bonus. Each time you deal damage, you have a 4% chance to unleash a lightning strike, dealing 1,724 damage to all nearby enemies and stunning them for two seconds. Cannot occur more often than once every 40 seconds. Now let's tell you where to find all of the items. Cutthroat, this is your next slot. You can find this in Destruction's End on Hell 2 or higher. Severed Thumb, this is your first ring. You can find this in Temple of Namadi on Hell 2 or higher. Broken Palm, this is your second ring. You can find this in Kikudis Rapids on Hell 2 or higher. Bloody Hand, this is your hand slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach or Forgotten Tower on Hell 1 or higher. Open Gut, this is your waste slot. You can find this on Tomb of Fahir, Hell 1 or higher. Orn Soul, this is your feet slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 1 or higher. Isitar Imbued. Isitar Imbued is a set focused on speed and killing enemies, making it incredibly useful for PvE DPS focused builds. Unfortunately, since this depends on killing enemies, it's only marginally useful in PvP. The 2 out of 6 bonus. Every time you defeat an enemy, you gain 30% increased movement speed for 2 seconds. The 4 out of 6 bonus. Damage dealt increased by 2.5% for every 5% increase in your movement speed, up to a maximum damage increase of 25%. The 6 out of 6 bonus. Each time you defeat an enemy, you have a 10% chance to gain an Orbiting Soul for 10 seconds, which deals 263 damage when it passes through an enemy. Cannot gain a Soul Orb more often than once every 40 seconds. Now let's tell you where to find these items. Isitar at Rest, this is your next slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach on Hell 2 or higher. Isitar Undone, this is your first ring slot. You can find this in Tomb of Fahir on Hell 2 or higher. Isitar Enraged, this is your second ring slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 2 or higher. Isitar's Open Hand, this is your hand slot. You can find this in Kukudis Rapids, Hell 1 or higher. Isitar's Contained, this is your waste slot. You can find this in Caverns of Echoes, Hell 1 or higher. Isitar the Brute, this is your feet slot. You can find this in Temple of Nomadi, Hell 1 or higher. Shepherd's Call to Wolves. Uh, Shepherd's Call to Wolves is useful by any class in the game, but it's clearly intended for necromancers. It's possibly the best set for them in the entire game for both PvP and PvE, while all other classes have few ways to truly benefit from it. The 2 out of 6 bonus is your summons deal 15% more damage. The 4 out of 6 bonus, critical hit chance increased by 3% for each of your summons, up to a maximum of 18%. Wow. The 6 out of 6 bonus, your summons enter a frenzied state for 10 seconds each time one of them critically hits. The frenzied state increases their damage and attack speed by 100%. Cannot occur more often than once every 40 seconds. All right, now let's tell you where to find this OP Necromancer set. Uh, Shepherd and Architect, this is your next uh, slot. Uh, you can find this in Temple of Namadi, Hell 2 or higher. Shepherd and Mother, this is your first ring slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach, Hell 2 or higher. Shepherd and Father, this is your second ring slot. You can find this in the Caverns of Echoes, Hell 2 and higher. Shepherd and Beastmaster, this is your hand slot. You can find this in Tomb of Fahir, Hell 1 and higher. Shepherd and Begetter, this is your waste slot. You can find this in Kikudis Rapids, Hell 1 and higher. Shepherd and Leader, this is your feet slot. You can find this in Destruction's End, Hell 1 and higher. Untouchable Montebank. Now, this is a set focused on shields and survival. This might be a good set for endgame PvE raids, but uh, we'll have to see exactly where this lands as the game's meta develops. One note here is that these bonuses came from a data mine that seemed incomplete, so there are many questions that we have about this set for launch. We really have to figure out exactly where this one's gonna land, so don't judge this set too harshly quite yet. The two out of six bonus. 
Each time you take damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 13% of your maximum life. It cannot occur more often than once every 9 seconds. Now the 4 out of 6 and the 6 out of 6 bonus are still a mystery to us for this set, uh, so we'll have to see how that lands at launch. Alright, let's tell you where you can find all pieces of Montebanks. Montebanks Flourish, this is your next slot. You can find this in Tomb of Fahir, Hell 2 or higher. Montebanks Misdirection, this is your first ring slot. You can find this in Destruction's End, Hell 2 or higher. Montebanks Marvel, this is your second ring slot. You can find this in Kikudus Rapids, Hell 2 or higher. Montebanks Shirking, this is your hand slot. You can find this in the Caverns of Echoes, Hell 1 or higher. Montebanks Bravado, this is your waste slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach, Hell 1 or higher. Montebanks Slyness, this is your feet slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 1 or higher. Vithu's Urges. Now Vithu's Urges is a set specifically designed for support builds in group dungeons, challenge rifts, or raids. Your support teammates will extend their buffs and attack speed and gain incredible life drain. The 2 out of 6 bonus increases your duration of all beneficial effects on you and your party members by 30%. The 4 out of 6 bonus increases the target's attack speed by 30% for 3 seconds each time you use a skill to grant a beneficial effect to yourself or a party member. The 6 out of 6 bonus. Each time you use a skill to buff yourself or a party member, this creates an area of, apothe this creates an area of apotheosis for 10 seconds that grants 15% life drain to yourself and any party members within the area. This cannot occur more often than once every 40 seconds. Alright, now let's tell you where to find all the pieces of this set. Awakener's Urge, this is your next slot. You can find this in Destruction's End on Hell 2 or higher. Shameless Urge. This is your first ring slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach on Hell 2 or higher, or the Temple of Namadi on Hell 2 or higher. Modest Urge. This is your second ring slot. You can find this in Kikudus Rapids on Hell 2 or higher. Luminary's Urge. This is your hand slot. You can find this on Mad King's Breach Hell 1 or higher. Exemplar's Urge. This is your waste slot. You can find this in Tomb of Fahir, Hell 1 or higher. Beacon's Urge. This is your feet slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 1 or higher. The War Rags of Shalbaz, or Shalbaz, is a set focused on making your primary attack as powerful as possible. This is a fairly powerful set for many classes, but this is especially powerful Demon Hunter with the crossbow shot, and sometimes Necromancer with Soulfire. Combine this with the Vengeance Stone family bonus to become a machine gun of double damage primary attacks. The 2 out of 6 bonus, primary attack damage increased by 15%. 4 out of 6 bonus, your primary attacks gradually increase your attack speed up to a maximum of 25%. 6 out of 6 bonus, your primary attacks have a chance to increase your attack speed for 10 seconds. This cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds. Now let's tell you where to find all of them. The Burning Heart of Shalbaz, this is your next slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 2, or higher. The Resting Fangs of Shalbaz. This is your first ring slot. You can find this in Destruction's End, Hell 2, or higher. The Braided Serpent of Shalbaz. This is your second ring slot. You can find this in the Tomb of Fahir, Hell 2, or higher. The Dozen Strikes of Shalbaz. You can find this is your uh, hand slot. You can find this in the Temple of Namadi, Hell 1, or higher. The Storm Tack of Shalbaz. This is your waste slot. You can find this in Mad King's Breach, Hell 1, or higher. The Wind Trods of Shalbaz. This is your feet slot. You can find this in the Caverns of Echoes, Hell 1, or higher. Windloft Perfection is an endgame focus set that makes your character both fast and powerful. But it has a high gear requirement, needing multiple items with movement speed, magic modifiers, and extremely rare legendary gems like Blood Soaked Jade. This is likely the best set in the entire game, but practically speaking, it might be difficult to collect all of the pieces you need and use for many players. The two out of six bonus. Gain thousand wins, increasing your movement speed by 15%. Thousand wins deactivates for three seconds if you take damage. The four out of six bonus. Increases your damage done by 20% while thousand wins is active. The six out of six bonus. Gain a shield that makes you immune to damage five times while Thousand Winds is active. Cannot gain this shield more often than once every 40 seconds. Now let's tell you where to find all the pieces. Wisdom's Edge, this is your next slot. You can find this in the Caverns of Echoes, Hell 2 or higher. Fair Fleet, this is your first ring slot. Mad King's Breach on Hell 2 or higher. Foul Fleet, this is your second ring slot. You can find this in Forgotten Tower, Hell 2 or higher. Hurtling Steel, this is your hand slot. You can find this in Destruction's End, Hell 1 or higher. Whip Crack, this is your waste slot. You can find this in Temple of Namadi, Hell 1 or higher. Stumpster, this is your feet slot. 
You can find this in Kikudus Rapids, Hell 1, or higher. All right, now let's rate each of these sets for different PvE and PvP activities. This is important because you need to decide which set you're going to target farm and do those dungeons over and over and over again until you find out exactly what you're looking for. Now this can be quite difficult and comprises much of the endgame grinding that you're going to do in Diablo Immortal. Now I've ranked these sets from 1 to 8, with 8 uh, being the worst and 1 being the best for all eight sets that we have in terms of how good they are. All right, so first let's take a look at our challenge rifts. These are solo only challenge rifts, not group based. So for this, the best one by far is going to be Winlock Perfection. And let me explain. At the very, very highest tiers of solo challenge rifts, even getting hit once might kill you instantly. Uh, this is when you're doing 500 or more uh, either ORDR or CR higher than the monsters that are in the challenge rift. So the ability to not take damage from certain hits when you're trying to dodge damage is absolutely invaluable. So Winloft definitely takes the cake here. Also on top of that, you're getting movement speed, which movement speed is very, very valuable in a challenge rift. Uh, because you might run into certain dead areas or dead zones or you need to group up enemies or this sort of thing. So uh, Winloft just sort of takes takes the, the win here pretty easily. Now, not too far behind Winloft are the Grace set and Isatar set. Both of these do uh, really good in mass PvE, especially in a challenge rift where you have tons and tons and tons of enemies all grouped up together. Grace does really great continual damage, which is something that you're going to have on nearly all of your builds for challenge rifts. You're going to have these big AoEs that you're going to need to DPS down all of these minor monsters. And then Isatar has uh, this... Uh, on death mechanic that makes you faster and makes you do more damage. So that actually works pretty well in challenge rifts. Uh, I should also mention this is probably Isatar's best category out of all of the categories. Besides this, Isatar as a set is pretty disappointing as you can see from the uh, other numbers here below. Uh, now, um, as, you, as you keep going uh, further up, uh, Shalbaz kind of falls off a little bit. Barons is almost is starting to get to the almost useless territory. Vithu, Vithu's is really support oriented. You might get you know a longer drawn quarter out of it if you're Crusader, for example, but it's really not that good. Uh, Montebanks is all about shields and survivability, so maybe at launch that one will rank up a little bit better but i really don't think so especially in a solo challenge rift you're really dependent more on damage and then shepherds nearly every single character in the game besides necromancer doesn't really use summons so it really kind of falls to the bottom now also worth noting here is shalbaz if you look here both uh, Shepherds and Shalbaz are, are pretty good for one class uh, alone, which is uh, Shepherds for Necro and Shalbaz for Demon Hunters because Crossbow Shot is freaking amazing. Uh, so you want to note that if you're playing Necromancer or Demon Hunter that these numbers are going to be slightly different for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at dungeons. Now, for dungeons, this is where you have four players together and you are just blasting the dungeons down. And you're more than likely what you're doing is you're actually farming set items. So for that, the most valuable thing you can have is uh, continual damage. So the grace set instantly takes the win here uh, with its amazing continual damage and persistent ground damage uh, buffs and effects. But also, not to be ignored, is Vithus. So if you are running a support build, if you are a Crusader or a Necromancer or sometimes even a Barbarian and you're running one of those support builds, don't ignore Vithus. Vithus might actually be better for you if you're not DPS focused. Uh, and also don't ignore Shepherds and Shalbaz, if, again, if you're a Necromancer or a Demon Hunter. Now, if you don't have Grace or you don't have the Vithus set, Winloft in a pinch can be really, really nice. But again, Winloft might be the best set in the game, but it's also the hardest to gear for. So if you have Winloft, then like good for you, but also like <laughs> you you definitely earned it if you were able to uh, gear Winloft up. All right, let's talk about uh, the PvP a, a little bit. And this one's really interesting because 
Baron set uh, takes the the win by far here. Uh, it's really hard to beat uh, stun duration basically in anything PvP. So Baron's is giving you like thirty percent. Is it thirty percent? It's thirty percent. Thirty percent just on, for the two out of six. And then it even gets better with the four out of six and the six out of six. So if you're going hardcore for PVP, you might want to target farm barons, but also note that barons also rates pretty lowly uh, on all of the PVE game modes. So you might actually want to be target farming more on uh, uh, the Winloft side of the equation here. Now, one thing that might surprise you about PVP is that Vithu's rates uh, really, really highly here at uh, number three. And the reason for that is not uh, because of solo PVP, but more in group-based PVP. So if you're doing Ride of Exile, you're doing the Vault, you're doing these sorts of things, having uh, group-based buffs and doing group-based PVP is a bit of a different beast than the Battlegrounds where you're just sort of like brawling and you don't, you don't you're kind of randomly match made with other people. So you don't really know what's going on there uh, in terms of getting randomly match made in, in the battlegrounds. Uh, so make sure you're not ignoring Vithus, especially if you're a Crusader uh, or if you're a Necromancer and you're running those support PvP style builds. Now we also have raids ranked here and Vithus by far is going to be the number one uh, set in raids. Uh, nearly everyone in their raid build is going to be running some sort of helpful or support or beneficial effect duration kind of build, except for Demon Hunter, which as you can note here, uh, Shalvaz is probably going to take the cake for you there. Uh, also, Necromancer does quite good with Shepard's set, and if you don't have a V2 set handy, you might want to use your Grace set if you have one of those lying around. Uh, Grace still does just amazing damage to bosses, and uh, anything you can do with continual damage against uh, a raid boss is just going to absolutely slap. But definitely, um, the thing that takes the cake here, of course, is Vithus, because staying alive is usually the hardest part of a, uh, of a raid. Now, also, you'll see that Montebanks is also raided kind of highly here. Um, again, we don't really know what's going to happen with Montebanks at launch. Who knows? Maybe Montebanks will actually be number one for raids. Uh, it certainly seems like Blizzard's trying to position it that way with the shields and that sort of thing. So we're going to keep a close eye on this category. Uh, but overall, I would I would really pay attention to Vithus and Grace here. And then, of course, you know, if you're Necro or Demon Hunter, make sure you're paying attention to Shepherds or the Shalbas sets. All right. Well, that's it for this one. Which set are you going to be going for and target farming when you get to level 60 and hitting the end game of Diablo Immortal? Which one is most interesting to you? Are you more of a support kind of uh, character? Are you playing like more of a necromancer or, uh, or a crusader and you, you're really interested in Bithus? Or do you just want to do massive amounts of damage and you're looking at uh, sets like Winloft Perfection or... Uh, perhaps you're 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 looking you're a necromancer and you're looking at shepherd's call of wolves. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.